And to talk more on this, we're joined by Dr. Wu jong yeop a research fellow at the Sejong Institute. Thank you, Dr. Wu, so much for coming in today. Thank you for having me. So there's been a flurry of very rare inter-Korean exchanges for the Olympics uh, since the start of this year. How do you assess the progress so far? Uh, as you mentioned, that it is very rare, and it has been a long period of cold relations between two Koreas uh, after the <coughs> North Korea's uh, series of provocations on Korean territory and also the series of nuclear development and the missile test. But it is a good thing that North Korea has decided to participate in Pyeongchang Winter Olympic Games. Uh, we can see in three aspects to assess uh, the progress of the North's participation in Olympic Games. First, uh, uh, in the perspective of inter-Korean relations, it's a good thing that we actually now open the channels to talk with the North mm -hmm. Korea. But the second aspect is the more problematic that South Korean government has hoped that the Pyeongchang Olympic Games can lead to the denuclearization right. talks with the North Korea. Mm -hmm. But so far, there is no indication right. from North that North Korea is interested in it. And third, there is a concern that North Korea's participation may cause a problem between Seoul and Washington. And I think that Seoul and Washington has managed uh, so far very well in terms of alliance management. So there's no uh, serious problems uh, between two allies. Now, the joint uh, Korean women's ice hockey team is certain to grab global attention during the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. And North Korea is also participating in other areas as well, with even its cheerleading squad mm -hmm. expected to arrive here in South Korea soon. How do you think all of this will play out? How do you think North Korea's Olympic participation will play out? Uh, traditionally, North Korea has not been really doing well in Winter Olympic Games. Uh, actually, North Korea didn't participate in 2014 uh, Russia Sochi Winter Olympic Games. But this time, North Korea's sudden decision to participation in Winter Olympic Games is actually good for South Korean government in terms of hosting the Olympic Games. As President Moon Jae-in mentioned at the IOC meeting uh, today, that there was a concern from the international community that they cannot uh, they cannot be sure for the safety of participating in Olympic Games because of the series of missile and nuclear mm -hmm. tests by North Korea. So there was even a report from uh, other countries that some countries are hesitant to send their athletes mm -hmm. to the Olympic Games. But North Korea's participation actually removed those kind, that kind of risk of uh, participating in Olympic Games by uh, other countries. So it's a good thing that we have North Korean athletes and other delegations mm -hmm. for the Olympic Games. Uh, but the problem now is that uh, there is too much discussion on how this participation from North Korea can lead to other matters mm -hmm. like diplomatic matters mm -hmm. and the security matters. So I think it's better for now to focus more on sports mm -hmm. side rather than uh, politics mm -hmm. side. Okay, now uh, North Korea's ceremonial head of state, Kim Yong-nam, will also be visiting South Korea for the Olympics. And all eyes are already fixed on the personal letter that he's expected to bring with him, which is a letter uh, reportedly verbally given by North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. What can we expect from this letter? Uh, first, we, we have to uh, clarify that there was no official statement from North Korea that Kim Yong-nam is going to bring the personal letter in any form uh, from North Korea yet. So there was a speculation that Kim Yong-nam may bring the personal letter or verbal letter uh, by Kim Jong-un to the President Moon Jae-in because uh, President Moon Jae-in uh, already expressed uh, his intention to meet uh, Kim Yong-nam when he came to South Korea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we don't know yet what kind of message will be contained in his like verbal or uh, personal letter to the President Moon Jae-in. But uh, if the letter uh, has any indication that North Korea uh, has an intention, Kim Jong-un uh, Kim Jong-un has any intention to meet President Moon Jae-in to have further discussions. Mm -hmm. So it may not be specific as, it, as we expected mm -hmm. it to be, but any indication that North Korean leader has an intention to meet our president, I think it's going to be a huge message for South Korea.
So it is just a speculation for now. We will have to see uh, how things unfold. Mm -hmm. Now, another team of North Korean artists, uh, including singers and dancers who will be performing at the Pyeongchang Winter Games, left the North this morning on board the ferry Ban mm -hmm. and have now entered South Korean waters. But we hear that North Korea changed its mind. Uh, uh, when it, uh, regarding the way of crossing the border three times before it decided to take mm -hmm. the ferry. Why the fickle? So we, we, we don't know yet what the exact reason of their changing their minds three times. But at the working level uh, exchanges that they have uh, proposed that they would use the land route uh, through Panmunjom first, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then they changed it to Gyeongisan right, route in right. the second time. And then last night they said that uh, they are going to use the sea line, uh, <coughs> uh, which might have some problems with the international sanctions. But uh, international sanctions uh, does not uh, designate Mangyongbong itself uh, as a sanction target. So we don't have uh, problems with that. Uh, but the problem is that we put our own sanctions uh, on uh, North Korean ships after 2010, uh, North Korea's uh, uh, sinking of Cheonan mm -hmm. uh, vessels. So we have that May 24 measures uh, ban on any North Korean ships to coming into Korean ter war, war, uh, sea territory. So now Korean government decide to uh, lim uh, lift those ban to allow Mangyongbongo to come into South Korea. So maybe North Korean government wants to see how South Korean government would respond if mm -hmm. they change the method of transportation to the Mangyongbongo because now uh, they believe that South Korean government would not oppose even if North Korea changed their method of transportation because they know that South Korean government wanted to continue the dialogue with the North Korea and they want to uh, South Korean government wants to have uh, North Korea's participation because uh, South Korean government believe that these interactions will lead to the further discussions. So I think North Korean, uh, North Korean government may uh, test the water to see how far they can go. Mm -hmm. So South Korea gave an exception to the Mangyongbong Ferry. Yes. Now, the Olympic spirit is all good. It's very friendly, very peaceful, but we can't overlook the controversy surrounding it. And one of them is, like you've mentioned, the uh, whether any inter-Korean exchange violates mm -hmm. global sanctions imposed on North Korean regime. Were there any violations so far? Uh, so far, as far as I know, there was no violation from the South Korean side. Uh, I heard that uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, has been uh, close consultation with the United States and also the United Nations uh, to avoid any uh, possibility of violating uh, from South Korean side. So I think the United Nations and the United, United States has all been in good consultation mode with the South Korea to prevent any possible friction of international sanctions. On that note, mm -hmm. do you think joint inter-Korean efforts to prepare for the Olympics will undermine the global sanctions imposed on North Korea in any way? So the concerns raised from the international community is not about technical ones because there is a way that the South Korean government technically avoid any friction uh, with the international sanctions. But politically, what kind of message that this inter-Korea relations would give to the North, uh, inter international community is more concern for the international community and the United States. Because as South Korean government, as we, as we saw today, that uh, unilaterally lifting the ban of uh, allowing North Korean ships to come into South Korean territory, that there can be uh, further measures that South Korean government take to allow more North Korean participation uh, in Olympic Games and beyond. So international com it is true that international community and the United States had some concerns about uh, those uh, frictions that can be made by North Korea's participation in Winter Olympic Games. So South Korean government is very carefully approaching the issues to manage the issues not to, not to uh, violate mm -hmm. any international mm -hmm. sanctions at this time. Now, much attention is also focused on when 
the South Korea-U.S. joint military drills that was delayed upon Seoul's request will begin. When do you think the drills will take place after the Olympics? Uh, last month, uh, Minister Song of Korea and the Secretary Mattis of the United States has met in Hawaii and has agreed to resume the postponed uh, joint military exercise right after the Olympic Games. But the specific date has not been decided yet, so we have to see uh, when they are going to schedule the exact date of the joint military exercise. But two government has agreed that uh, right after the Olympic Games, they are going to have a military exercise. So we are going to have joint military exercise sometime in, in April. Sometime in April. Now, according to CNN this morning, U.S. Uh, President Donald Trump's daughter and uh, White House advisor Ivanka Trump mm -hmm. will be visiting South Korea for the Olympics, along with a presidential delegation to attend the Olympics closing ceremony. Mm -hmm. Implications to her visit? Uh, first, the President Trump himself has mentioned uh, a couple times that his family members would visit Pyeongchang Olympic Games. So uh, for the opening ceremony, we are going to have Vice President Pence and the presidential delegations to the opening ceremony. And as, he pro as President Trump promised that he's going to send uh, his daughter and mm -hmm. also the official White House staff, mm -hmm. uh, special aid to the President, the Ivanka Trump, to the closing ceremony. So there was a speculation mm -hmm. that uh, there was a chance or opportunity that U North Korea and the United States meet at the, uh, Pyeongchang. So it can have some possibility of opening of the relations between North Korea and the United States. So we don't know yet because mm -hmm. uh, it seems like the United States is not interested in meeting North Korean delegations so far. But we, we have to see how, how, this going, how this is going to pan mm -hmm. out. Like you've mentioned, U.S. President, U.S. Vice President mm -hmm. Mike Pence will also be visiting. What kind of message do you think Pence will send to North Korea this time? Uh, as we have seen from the media report that he has been very critical uh, of North Korea's participation in Olympic Games. So even he mentioned that his, his purpose of visit to Korea this time is to stop North Korea hijacking the Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's going to, uh, it is believed that he's going to uh, send a message which is very like hawkish and hardline to North Korea's uh, nuclear pursuit. So even, even though uh, his purpose of visit is to congratulate uh, South Korean government hosting the Winter Olympic Games, but besides that, he's going to mention uh, many things about North Korea's uh, problems and also North Korea's human rights issues this time. So he'll be talking a lot more than figure skating and speed skating. Mm -hmm. uh, now, some 26 heads of state, along with high-ranking officials, will be visiting South Korea for the Olympics. Uh, what kind of outcome do you expect from President Moon Jae-in's Olympics diplomacy? So as we discussed that there has been concerns from international community about the safety of Olympic Games held in South Korea because the tensions has raised uh, by North Korea's missile and nuclear test. And there was uh, tensions, uh, military tensions in Korean Peninsula because of uh, President Trump and Kim Jong-un's like, verbal exchange on, on the matters on Korean Peninsula. Mm -hmm. So I think it's great for uh, our president to show international community that uh, our government can manage the crisis issues on the Korean Peninsula. Mm -hmm. And it's also very good that after 1988 mm -hmm. Olympic Games, uh, this is the great opportunity for our government to show the world that uh, Korean government, South Korea, has developed much more in, in 30 years after the uh, 1988 Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. now, President Moon Jae-in is expected to hold a series of multilateral mm -hmm. talks with world leaders and high-ranking officials. What do you think, what kind of topic do you think will be at the center of attention? Uh, first, uh, Moon Jae-in government's uh, agenda on international community has been diversifying our uh, diplomatic portfolio because we have focused only on our neighboring countries and also 
uh, US, Russia, China, and Japan, so-called four major countries mm -hmm. around Korean Peninsula. But uh, with this opportunity, uh, Moon Jae-in government can more diversify our diplomatic portfolio to get more international support on South Korea's agenda in international community. And maybe with the North Korea's participation this time, uh, South Korean government can get more support from the international community how to change the North Korean behavior. Mm -hmm. All right, that's all the time we have for you today. Thank you so much for coming in and sharing your insights. Thank you.